Okay, it is 10 o'clock, so it was. it is with profound happiness that I am gaveling this in-person gathering of the National Advisory Council for Human Genome Research. For those keeping numerical score, this is the 97th meeting of this advisory council, which means we are three away from an important uh, milestone. And you know us at NHGRI, we love our milestones. So spoiler alert, expect a fanfare for the 100th. I'm not gonna reveal now what that fanfare will consist of, but there will be fanfare for the 100th. Um, and that doesn't mean we're gonna have it at an exotic location, but it does mean we're gonna celebrate 100 advisory council meetings. Um, it is truly a pleasure to see uh, uh, many of you in person. Some of you I have not seen since uh, before the pandemic, including some members of my own staff who I've not seen in person. Uh, for those who are watching remotely, we have the majority of council members in the room around this table and many NHGRI staff members in the back. We do have a handful of council members who are joining us remotely through Zoom and this uh, new capability that we've all learned far too much about, um, but we will use uh, uh, in going forward in to facilitate meetings uh, for those who can't join. So rather than just coming in through a speaker phone in, or a speaker in the ceiling, we'll be able to also see them and have them uh, participate visually. We'll be able to interact uh, through Zoom. Um, I uh, have a number of thoughts. Uh, I guess Rudy tells me we, I, I blurred out the number that we had six virtual council meetings. I couldn't even remember the number. There were just too many of them. So that's why it's just joyous to see everybody in person. Also, all of us up front, when we heard the buzz of people talking, it was it was pleasantly deafening uh, and invigorating to hear that kind of interaction because uh, that's just so much of what we've been missing the past few years. So that's also been pleasurable. I will also tell you that sitting alone in a in my conference room by my office, giving director support, participating, and I I went through and did the ceremonial gaveling even though I was alone in my room. Now I, I did it because it's tradition. I did it because it gave me an authoritative rush to be able to gavel, even though, but re in reality, when I would gavel it, the only thing I would see happening around me is that the mice that accumulated in building 31 during the pandemic, they'd scurry away and I wouldn't see them again till lunch. But no, that's actually, we did have mice, but no, I'm joking. There really were not mice during my director's report. Actually, that would have been good. I would have had an audience. I would have loved to have mice watching my director's report. There's, as all of us have experienced, nothing weirder than giving a talk or giving a seminar, sitting alone somewhere in front of a microphone and a computer and a, and a video camera. But we've endured it, but we've come to appreciate it. It's even better to speak in front of uh, live people. So uh, those were the main things I wanted to point out. Um, and um, with that, I will turn this over for now uh, to our superb executive secretary of the council, Rudy Pizzotti. Thank you, Eric, and good morning, everyone. I'll just add to, Eric, to Eric's comment, I'll add that there was quite a bit of dust on this jacket that I had to remove this morning. It was quite remarkable what happens when something sits in your closet for two years. So I want to remind the council members that we are live streaming the open session of this council meeting, as we do with all of them. There will also be an archive kept of this meeting, and they can access the meetings going back all the way to 2011. We have several new people to introduce today. Some of them are new council members. Uh, Dr. Judy Cho is professor and dean of translational genetics in the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. She also serves as the director of the Charles Bronfen Institute for Personalized Medicine, also at Mount Sinai. Dr. Cho's longstanding interest in the characterization and molecular genetic causes of inflammatory bowel disease and Crohn's disease and has been a leader in that field for a number of years. She's received 20 awards from NIH, including funding from NIDDK, NIAID, NIGMS, and NCRR. She has a distinguished record of service to NIH committees, including the Advisory Council of NIDDK, the Board of Scientific Directors, or Board of Scientific Counselors at NIDDK, multiple peer review panels, including four years on the genomics Genetics of Health and Disease Study section, the last two of which she served as chair. And now she's here on our council. So thank you, Judy, and welcome. Nancy Cox, is one of our remote participants, is the Mary Phillips Edmonds Gray Professor of Genetics 
and the director of the Division of Genetic Medicine and the director of the Vanderbilt Genetics Institute. Trained in human genetics and genetic epidemiology, Nancy has been involved in linkage analysis and association studies of speech impediment, psychiatric disorders, diabetes, autoimmune diseases, autism, and many other human disorders and traits. More recently, her research interests have included developing methods to mine data from electronic health records and phenotyping patients from health records data. She has received over 25 awards from NIH, including funding from NIGMS, NHGRI, NIMHD, NIMH, NEI, NIDDK, and NHLBI. Dr. Kirk Cox has served on NIDDK's Advisory Council and the Board of Regents of the National Library of Medicine, and well over 100 peer review panels at NIH, several of them for me. Thank you, Nancy, and welcome. Next up is Tim Reddy. He's the associate professor with dual appointments in the Department of Biostatistics and Bioinformatics and the Department of Molecular Genetics and Microbiology at Duke University. Tim also serves as the director of graduate studies for the Computational Biology and Bioinformatics graduate program at Duke. His longstanding research interests focus on understanding how genetic variation and epigenetic changes that alter gene regulation contribute to the development of human disease. His laboratory applies high throughput genomic technologies to identify associations between genomic changes and diseases and traits. Dr. Reddy has served on standing study sections and multiple special emphasis panels at NIH, and he has received funding from NHGRI, NICHD, NIDDK, and NIMH. Welcome, Tim. Next, I want to introduce uh, several new staff members who have joined NHGRI since the May Council meeting. When I call your name, please stand up. If you're comfortable, drop your mask for a couple of seconds so the council can see you. Let's start with Marisa Pittman. Marisa received an undergraduate degree in management, science, and information systems from Penn State University. She also has a master's in business administration degree from the University of Chicago. Marisa is lead public affairs specialist in NHGRI's Office of Communications. She oversees NHGRI's media relations, history of genomics program, our social media activities, and NHGRI's public and internal website content, design, and visual presentation. Prior to joining NHGRI, Marisa served as branch chief in the Office of Strategic Communications at the General, Sur General Services Administration. Thank you and welcome, Marisa. And uh, Helen, could I ask you to bring up the photos of Sonia Sue and Anna Rogers? Two new em employees are uh, remote workers. Sonia Sue is a recent graduate of McGill University where she earned a PhD degree in neuroscience. Her thesis work focused on genes that control aging in the nematode C. elegans. Sonia has experience writing about scientific discovery for the general public. She has written pieces for the McGill Tribune and Science Borealis. Sonia is a science writer in the Office of Communications, and she joins us remotely today. Yes, but we don't have those photos. Okay. Next up is uh, Anna Rogers. Anna received a master's degree in molecular biology at the University of California, Berkeley. Her research experiences include the characterization of genomes from multiple organisms, hence her interest in genomics. Uh, while in graduate school, she wrote about scientific discoveries for wider audiences, including stories for Berkeley Science Review and Scientific American. Anna is a science writer in the Office of Communication, and she also joins us remotely today. We have a new cohort of program analysts who've joined NHGRI over the summer. They're with us today in the room, so please stand when I call your name. Jake Baroque. Jake graduated from the University of Montana with BS degrees in biology and microbiology and a minor in biochemistry. His undergraduate research work included using phylogenetic data to study the origin of nitrogen fixation genes in the cyanobacter Archaeochloris marina, and he used comparative genomics to study cyanobacteria in thermal springs in Yellowstone. 
Jake will work on the H3 Africa program, developmental GDG techs, comparative genomics, and the GWAS catalog. Thank you, Jake. So Bly. So as a recent graduate of Barnard College in New York, where she earned undergraduate degrees in archeology span and biology. As an undergrad, Zoe developed interests in public health, forensic, forensics, and epidemiology. At NHGRI, she will work on the Clinical Genome Resource or ClinGen program, the Clinical Sequencing Evidence Generating Research Project, CSER, and the International 100K Cohort Consortium or IHCC. Welcome, Zoe. Sarah Curran. Sarah comes to NHGRI having graduated recently from Christopher Newport University. She earned a BS degree in cellular, molecular, and physiological biology, as well as a BA degree in leadership studies and a minor in Spanish. Her work responsibilities at NHGRI will include the genomics research to elucidate the genetics of rare disease, or Gregor Consortium, the Centers of Excellence in Genomic Science, or SEGS program, and the Human Genome Reference and HGRP and the Genome Sequencing Program. Welcome, Sarah. Bree Foster. Bree is a recent graduate of Davidson College. She earned a BS degree in biology in the pre-medicine track. At Davidson, she conducted research to explore the functionality of multiple borate transporters that are homologous to human band three. She worked as a student health advisor and promoted diversity, equity, and inclusion work in STEM as a member of the Fostering Inclusivity and Respect in Science Together project at Davidson. Bree will work on the Ethical, Legal, and Social Implications, or ELSI research program, and the Human Hereditary Health in Africa, or H3 Africa programs. Welcome, Bree. Sarah Hutchison. Sarah graduated from Georgetown University with a BS degree in biology and a minor in cognitive science. During her studies at Georgetown, she promoted a smoking cessation counseling program for cancer patients and a trial evaluating cascade genetic testing for certain types of hereditary cancer. At NHGRI, Sarah will work on the Undiagnosed Disease Network, or UDN, and the Computational Genomics and Data Science Program and the awards that were made from the recent Genetic Counseling RFA. Welcome, Sarah. Imani McGregor. Imani is a recent graduate from Brown University where she earned a BA degree in public health. During her undergraduate studies, she worked as a research assistant at the Center for Alcohol and Addiction Studies. At NHGRI, Imani will work on the Clinical Genome Research ClinGen, Resource, ClinGen, and the LC Research Program. Welcome, Imani. Janavi Narula. Janavi comes to NHGRI as a recent graduate from the University of California, Los Angeles, where she earned a BS degree in biology with a minor in English. At NHGRI, she'll work on the Electronic Medical Records and Genomics, or eMERGE network, the Genomic Medicine Working Group, and Advancing Genomic Medicine Research. Welcome, Janavi. John Avi, still working on that. Colette Pollard. Colette graduated from Carleton College where she earned a BA degree in statistics. While at Carleton, she worked as a statistical consultant and conducted research on double-strand break repair with CRISPR and on the use of machine learning methods to identify predictors of cell sex from transcription data. She has a particular interest in the use of statistical tools to better understand bio biological data. Paulette will work on the Analysis, Visualization, and Informatics Lab Space, or ANVIL project, and other activities in the Office of Genomic Data Science at NHGRI. Welcome, Colette. Maya Van Zanten. Maya is a graduate of the University of Nevada at Reno, where she earned a BS degree in biology, cell, and molecular emphasis. Maya has a background in scientific communication and education from her experiences as a science museum educator and undergraduate teaching assistant for biology courses. Maya's responsibility at NHGRI will include the Human Biomolecular Atlas Program, 
Hub Map and the Knockout Mouse Phenotyping or COMP2 project. Welcome, Maya. Riley Wilson. Riley graduated this spring from Virginia Polytech Institute and State University in Blacksburg, Virginia. She earned a BS degree in systems biology and has and had research experience developing novel methods to classify bacteriophages. Riley will work on the molecular phenotypes of null alleles in cells, in cells or the morphic project, polygenic risk methods of a diverse population, primed, and NHGRI's multi-omic project. Welcome, Riley. Caprina Pipion Williams. Caprina is a recent graduate of California State University Stanislaus, where she earned a BS degree in organismal biology with minors in chemistry and economics. Caprina is interested in ethical issues as related to the implementation of genomic technologies in healthcare. She serves as the program analyst who supports the NHGRI Data Access Committee that reviews requests for access to controlled genomics data sets. Welcome, Caprina. And last but certainly not least, we welcome back Julie Kim. Julie has been a program analyst for the past three years at NHGRI, but now she assumes a new role as a scientific program specialist working in the Office of Genomics Data Science. Julie has only recently begun this new position, but we anticipate she will work with OGDS staff to analyze genomic data science programs and participate in data science research initi initiatives across NIH. We're happy to have you back, Julie. Uh, I want to acknowledge our Council Society liaison members who are attending meetings remotely, Ellen Giarelli from the International Society of Nurses and Genetics, Mona Miller from the American Society of Human Genetics, Matthew Caffett from the Genetic Alliance, and Rhonda Schoenberg from the National Society of Genetic Counselors. I also want to acknowledge uh, Katie Bardsley, who is our program analyst program analyst at NHGRI who is taking the council minutes today and will turn them into a report over the next few weeks. And I wanna thank Helen Thompson, another program analyst who is assisting with the management of the Zoom slides today. And I want to correct myself uh, for Zoe Bly. She prefers to identify herself as they and them. My mistake. Council members, I seek your approval of the May Council Minutes. Does anyone have any comments or edits about the minutes? Okay, can I get a motion to approve? Second, thank you, Steve. All in favor? Anyone opposed? Anyone wishing to abstain? Okay, thank you very much. Please note on the op open session agenda, we have the meeting dates for 2023 and 2024. Make sure you give those with your assistance. And uh, if you notice any conflicts, scheduling conflicts, please let me and Comfort Brown know about that. Other than, well, we'll think of something special to do on Valentine's Day, Steve. <coughs> oh, thank you. Yes, thank you very much, Monica. Uh, I also want to introduce Annalise Galsinski, who is the new council coordinator. You're used to having messages from Linda Hall, but Annalise has assumed those duties uh, remarkably well. Thank you, Annalise. Uh, I think I'm ready to turn this over to Eric for the director's report now. 